In today's video, we're going to build a solar power system in the easiest way possible with the least amount of tools. A lot of people watching my videos get intimidated by the crimping and they're scared to crimp wires. But what you can do instead is buy prefabricated battery cables from Walmart or AutoZone and then you can get an amp wiring kit to hook up the solar charge controller. So we're going to hook up this whole system with tools that can be found at any store. And this is actually a pretty powerful system. We have a 100 amp hour sealed lead acid VMAX tank battery. This is 70 pounds. We've got a 40 amp solar charge controller. We have a new power 100 watt solar panel. And then we have a 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. Here are the only tools that you will need a flathead screwdriver, a small socket set, a cable cutter, and then a wire stripper. This one's preferable for beginners, but if you want to do a perfect job, buy this one. You should also buy an impact gun or a drill so you can mount the components to a wooden board. You should also buy a piece of plywood. So the first step in building this system is mounting these components onto a piece of plywood. We have the input terminals of the solar charge controller facing down and they're close to the inverter. And the inverter will connect directly to the battery. So the inverter can be wherever it needs to be, but the solar charge controller needs to be somewhat close to the inverter. So let's mount these with a couple wood screws. So now that our components are mounted, we need to connect the inverter to some battery cables. Because of the size of this inverter, two gauge copper wire will work really well. You can buy these at Walmart or an auto parts store, pretty much anywhere will carry these. So these cables will go between the inverter and the battery, but we need to fuse it. So we have a 175 amp bolt on fuse. This will attach to the battery and then these will attach to the inverter to make sure that the red goes on the red and the black goes on the black. So first let's put these connectors on the terminals for the inverter and it should look like this and this is what we're going to use to connect the solar charge controller to the inverter it has pre-crimped connections it's eight gauge wire and it comes with a 50 amp fuse which is the perfect size for a 40 amp solar charge controller and this is about 20 bucks at walmart's and it gives you a lot of wire and it's high quality wire but we only need to use a little bit of it it also gives you a ground wire and so this is going to be the first one that we're going to connect the solar charge controller to the inverter with so the first unforeseen circumstance is that this hole was just slightly too small for the inverter terminals so I had to drill it out so when you look for an inverter wiring kit make sure that the hole will fit on the inverter terminal and put this cable directly on the terminal and then screw it down and tighten it down really good and make sure that all of these little connectors are flush with one another and now we need to cut and strip this cable so it fits into the negative battery terminal on the solar charge controller you will see it depicted by a small battery icon. So first measure it and then cut it. Now we need to strip it. If you've never done this before, it's very simple. This is a cheap tool you can buy anywhere. All you have to do is that. And then use your flathead screwdriver to unscrew this terminal. And then tighten it down really good, but make sure that the insulation doesn't go inside. Make sure that the input terminal is only touching wire. Now we can connect the positive terminal. Just slip this on the terminal of the inverter and screw it down. Now we need to cut this wire and then put it into the solar charge controller. So cut it about here, then unscrew the positive terminal on the solar charge controller and then put it inside the hole and then tighten it down. Just like that, now we have a charging and discharging system for our solar battery. And remember, 50 amp fuse for 40 amp solar charge controller. Now what we're gonna do is add a cigarette lighter adapter and we're gonna put it in the low terminals of the solar charge controller because this has 20 amp short circuit protection. So we can use the fuse that's internal to safely connect this cigarette lighter adapter. But first we need to strip these wires. And because these wires are pretty tiny, we need to fold them in half to fit this tiny input terminal. And then put it in the hole and tighten it down. Negative goes to black, positive goes to red. And now we have a cigarette lighter adapter and you can connect USB chargers or whatever else you need. You can also buy a laptop charger for cigarette lighters and so much more. We have our system up here and our battery down here. We're gonna connect the positive that has the fuse to the positive terminal of the battery and the negative to the negative terminal of the battery. This is what it should look like. We have the positive going to the positive, negative going to the negative, and we used a wrench to tighten down these bolts. And when you connect the battery to your system, all of these things should turn on. There should be a green light on the solar charge controller and the inverter should have power. And to test this out, add an appliance to the inverter and turn it on. 
If the cigarette lighter does not have power, you might have to press the button on the solar charge controller to turn on the power for this. Now this system's pretty much complete, but we need to add a solar panel. So most solar panels come with MC4 connectors. This one does not because I clipped them off. If the solar panel is close to your system, you can strip these wires and put it directly into the solar charge controller. If you have MC4 connectors, what you need to do is buy an MC4 extension cord. This will plug into it and then it will connect to the solar charge controller. And at the end of the extension cords, it's gonna look like this. You'll have a positive and a negative. And all you have to do is strip these wires and now we're gonna add an MT50 screen and this is super simple and easy to do. You have a plug on the back and then you just plug this directly into the solar charge controller. And this will tell you all sorts of good things. It will tell you the voltage of your battery, the voltage of your solar panels and how much power is charging the battery. Also, this will tell you if there's power at the load terminals of the solar charge controller. So if you try to use your cigarette lighter adapter and there's no power, it means that you need to turn it on. So right now it's on, but we can turn it off by pressing OK. And now it looks like it's off, and that means that there's no power at the load terminals. If you press OK again, it will look like this, and now we have power here. You can mount this board with the components in a closet and then put this somewhere in your living area. You can put the battery somewhere where it's safe to put a battery. And that's pretty much it guys. This is super easy to build. Anybody can do this. You can find all of these parts at local stores and all of these components can be found on Amazon. Please check out my website to see all of the components I recommend. And even though this is very easy for everyday people to build, I definitely recommend everybody learning how to crimp and measure and cut wires properly to build custom systems. Because if you know how to do that, you can make any size system you want. In this system, we're very constrained to the length of wire and what we have available in the connectors. But when you can crimp wires, you can build anything you want. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video and I'll talk to you later. See ya.